Calling someone a con artist often implies a degree of expertise, even admiration to what is in fact despicable crime. It's not art, it's theft. And it takes a particularly heartless and greedy person to do it. Sydney's Melissa Caddick was a perfect example. She took $25 million from her own family and friends who lost everything. She's now presumed dead, so we'll never know why she acted so shamefully. Melissa Caddick, though, is starting to look like a cheap pretender compared to Chris Marco. Over 20 years, he's taken a quarter of a billion dollars from investors. And now most of their money is missing. But Marco is very much alive. And that means we can ask him, where did it go? Meet Chris Marco. Chris Marco, Liam Bartlett. I was expecting you. A smooth-talking Perth businessman. You'd like to speak to me, I guess. Full of charm and empty promises. A lot of people would like to speak to you. Who would? Well, about 340 investors. Really? That they you've imagine. duped out of their money. I certainly didn't do that, but if you make an appointment to speak with me, I'd be very happy to do that. He might really? not appear to have a care in the world. You're leading a pretty good life, aren't you? If you make an appointment to speak with me, I'll be very happy to talk to you. But he's at the heart of one of the biggest financial scandals Australia has ever seen. Accused of being a master manipulator who ran an enormous Ponzi operation. I've not seen a scheme in Australia of this scale before. To give it some context, other recent schemes, such as the Melissa Caddick matter, was purported to involve $25 million of investor funds. So on that basis, this scheme is more than 10 times that size. Chris Marco boasted of big returns for big investments. 100% guaranteed. Stupid, silly. People watching this are gonna say, you bloody idiot, you know? Sucking hundreds of people into his supposedly elite investment program. He's Bernie Madoff's little brother, isn't he? That's what he is. But his quarter of a billion dollar scheme has all the hallmarks of a scam. He was conning me. Looking back, he had it in his mind all along, what he intended to do. A precarious house of cards. He should be behind bars, mate. It's fraud on a grand scale, isn't it? Built by a man accused of spending millions of dollars of investors' money. When it all came tumbling down, it took everyone with it. I just cannot believe he did this to us. And not only me, but to other people. They've lost their homes, they've lost their health. It's very sad what he's done to a lot of people. Patricia Markopoulos lost everything to Chris Marco. She feels she was preyed on when she was at her most vulnerable. Believe it or not, by a member of her own family. So he was your husband's cousin? Cousin, cousin, yeah. Peter and he were very close. Patricia and her husband Peter had long invested with Chris Marco. Life was good up until 2013, when tragedy struck. He had an accident and um, he um, fell on his head and uh, he had catastrophic brain damage. For 17 months, Peter was treated in hospital for an injury that would eventually take his life. Patricia says over that traumatic period, Chris Marco became a rock of support. He would even be in there pretty well daily or every second day. I'd never seen him so many times. The doctors didn't hold out any hope for Peter and Chris eventually started to talk to me about um, my finances because we had our own business and he would say that there's not much use in having properties um, when the cash is far better for you. So your husband's on his deathbed. Yeah. And he's saying to you, look, sell the properties, Trish. Yeah. You're better off with the cash, but the cash is better off with me. Yeah, that's correct. With the death of her husband, Patricia says she did what Chris Marco said, selling her assets to live off the interest of his supposedly foolproof investment scheme. 
although the Perth businessman insists he never gave Patricia financial advice or advised her to sell her properties. Can you put any sort of figure on the amount of money that you gave him or ha handed over to him? It was just over five million dollars. Five million? That's a lot of money, Trish. Yeah. Patricia was far from alone. What began with family and friends grew to ensnare hundreds more. Chris Marco promised unbelievable returns. And that's what investors got until his elaborate scheme was exposed. The scale of what went on here is truly mind boggling. 340 investors were lured into sinking their savings into Chris Marco's money-making scheme to the tune of more than a quarter of a billion dollars. Even more remarkable, he carried out this extraordinary enterprise while being unlicensed and unregistered, with all that money going through his personal bank accounts. You've got to wonder how he was able to operate undetected by authorities for 16 years. Certainly, I think originally it was supposed to be for sophisticated investors, but I would have spoken to dozens of investors who I would not classify as sophisticated investors, and that's people from mums and dads, brothers and sisters, in-laws, cousins. Um, um, usually, they're, they're, you know, quite often they can be parties related to each other. So there are a lot of uh, heartbreaking stories. Court-appointed receiver Rob Brower of McGrath Nickel has been piecing together an enormous financial jigsaw puzzle, trying to work out precisely where Chris Marco's millions ended up. How do you describe then Mr Marco's business model? What's he actually doing? So Mr Marco presents as a private investor, so investors would be depositing their funds in his personal bank account. Um, and he would then be saying that he's uh, participating in investments called private placement programs. Private placement programs are usually the preserve of the very top end of town. They are also viewed by the FBI as ripe for exploitation. Chris Marco claimed to have mastered the murky world of international debt markets, buying and selling for big returns an area so complex and indecipherable to the average person that only he had the expertise to pull it off. This is the key, isn't it? He says these private placement programs are what makes the money for his investors. Yeah. This is the magic according to him. Yeah. Have you seen any private placement programs that he has set up be successful? This is the absolutely. This is the this is the hub of it, and and very difficult to explain even what a private placement program is because all we've got is Mr. Marco's representations as he gave to investors. Um, but in I'm yet to find any type of expert or in in the financial markets or banking industry that recognises or can validate the types of investments Mr. Marco was participating in. So in more than, say, 16 years that the scheme was operating and over dozens of attempts in tr attempting to participate in private placement programs. Unfortunately, it seems as though none of those programs were successful. None of them? None of them. Not one? There is no returns coming from 16 years' worth of participating in private placement programs. For years, though, Chris Marco's exclusive scheme was a dream for the investors who were allowed in paying out returns of anything between 7% to 40% per quarter, always on time, always without fail. Only, according to Rob Brower, the interest payments were made directly from the money of new investors, the classic definition of a Ponzi scheme. This was a scheme that relied on word of mouth. So typically, these would be family and friends around you who you may have observed for years receiving without fail quarterly cash returns. And that must be very alluring and very compelling. So the investment always looked attractive from the outside? Absolutely. I mean, it's said that Mr Marco never missed a payment and that may well be true. 
but the problem was it was not investment returns. It was just simply the redistribution of other people's money. Honestly, I slapped myself. I, I, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. Troy Adams runs to keep fit and to forget. A fly-in, fly-out worker whose opportunity to reap the rewards of a scheme for elite investors would be a life changer, though not in the way he might have hoped. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands. It's a very hard lesson to learn, isn't it? It's been brutal. I, I wish it upon no man or woman. I really don't. All my hopes and dreams gone, my home gone, car's gone, my, my marriage hanging on by a thread. It's just been never ending, never ending. It's the same sorry story for other members of his family, including Troy's father, Alan. Yeah, it was too good to be true. Hindsight's a great thing, and uh, we look now and think, crikey dick, you know, I mean, where was our brains? How are you coping with it all, son? Ah, uh, you know, Dad, you know me, open book. Introduced by a close family friend who worked with financial whiz Chris Marco, Alan and Troy felt like they'd been allowed access to an exclusive club. Alongside high rollers, who were chipping in many millions at a time, they were lured to invest by the extraordinary returns on offer. In the early 2013s, they were getting up to 15%, 12%, 10%. And when I came on board on, in 2016, uh, we were getting 7%, and that was paid every 14 weeks. Uh, did you stop and think, hang on a minute, uh, that sounds too good to be true? Absolutely. Actually, my accountant told me, do not invest more, <coughs> more than you can afford. And uh, we ignored that. We're a bit stupid. Uh, silly, I suppose, you know what I mean? But we, were, we, were taught, we, we thought it was a uh, legitimate business that he had. And uh, we were fooled. Yeah. Chris Marco was always polite always responsive. His investment strategy may have been bamboozling to those who were in it, but he always had a way of making them feel they were part of something special. Oh, his paddle was great, you know what I mean? He'd convince an Eskimo to sort of uh, take off his clothes and run around naked, you know? <laughs> That's the sort of guy he was. He's, he's very, very reassuring, very convincing. So he presents as a super confident sophisticated investor yep. to people like you. Yep. Uh, what do you think really is beneath the surface? Well, I've never met the guy. I've spoken to him on the phone, Liam. I've never met him personally. You've never met him? No. $700,000 later and you never met him? Stupid, yeah. So all those savings? A lot, yeah. For 42 years of married life? Of married life, yeah. All the stuff you squirrelled away? That's right, yeah. All gone? Very hard work through both of us. Over the years, manual work, hard work, um, yeah, lost a lot. In about mid-2017, ASIC received a complaint which really raised some red flags for us and caused us to start making inquiries. Uh, and we did commence a formal investigation uh, early in 2018. So at that stage, the scheme had been operating for 15 odd years. That's correct. It had Natalie Durr leads the Criminal Intelligence Unit of the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. How is it that the regulator, you're the watchdog, mm. how is it that you can mm. let this go on for 15 years? Uh, there was just nothing to bring that investment scheme to our attention at the time. Following that first complaint, it took a year and a half for ASIC to raid Chris Marco's offices. Two and a half years later, he's still under investigation. Mr Marco blames your organisation, ASIC, for shutting him down prematurely. He says that's the reason he can't get any money back to investors. What do you say to that? No, we don't agree with that at all. With his assets frozen, Chris Marco is barred from running a financial scheme without a licence. But up until recently, He's been telling investors, like Troy Adams, that their money will come. He's been playing the same fiddle now since ASIC froze him. Our money's safe. We're going to get our full money back, you know. The same tune, the same fiddle. Don't worry about anything. It's all, you know, ASIC's botched investigation and 
all the instalments and will be coming in soon from overseas. They're due any day now. I just wish they stopped it earlier. I wish they'd gone there earlier because I don't know how someone can run a scheme like that for as long as he did. He should be behind bars, mate. I mean, that's, 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 it's fraud on a grand scale, isn't it? It's millions and millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Where is it? What's he done? Dug a hole and buried it in his backyard. Where's it all gone? He may live an outwardly modest life, but Chris Marco liked to spend big. He had a $3 million collection of iconic muscle cars, including this rare 1971 Ford Falcon, all of which have now been auctioned by the receivers. His taste for exotic V8s matched only by his interest in property. This is Kalgoorlie Street, but it might as well be called Marco Street because this is where Chris spent many of his millions. Four houses in a row here were all owned by the Marco family, rebuilt or renovated at enormous cost. One for his sister, one for his son, and one for Chris Marco and his wife. Yet more was spent on a host of commercial properties, a complex money trail that receiver Rob Brower is still unpicking. So for the duration of the scheme, which started in 2003, investors have contributed $260 million. Now, we know from our investigations that about 210 million of that has gone back to investors badged as investment returns. And the balance has been used to purchase properties, about $15 million, a classic car collection, about $3 million, uh, about $11 million going in failed attempts of private placement programs. $12 million to parties closely associated with Mr Marco for currently unsubstantiated purposes. Do you think there's a potential that there are still things out there you haven't discovered? It's certainly possible. Just the sheer amount of money that was going through this scheme, it would not surprise me if there were additional assets. There is another troubling aspect to this story, the role of the Westpac Bank. All of the investors' money, more than a quarter of a billion dollars, was deposited into Chris Marco's personal bank accounts, co-mingled with his own funds, essentially becoming one big piggy bank. To investors like Alan Adams, it's inconceivable no one smelled a rat. Why weren't there red flags at Westpac Bank raised? Did he have somebody working in there? I don't know. Surely Westpac Bank should have alerted the watchdog to maybe act a little bit sooner. Would have saved a lot of investors' heartbreak. I know two investors, a young couple, friends of ours, that put their life savings in and they, it was two weeks prior to them getting shut down. So they lost everything within two weeks. Sad. Westpac won't be drawn on what it did or didn't do, saying there are strict legal obligations that prevent it from commenting. As for Chris Marco, he says the home renovations and expensive cars were all just smart investments. He strongly denies running a Ponzi scheme and claims he was about to make huge money just before his scheme was wound up. That's his argument, isn't it? That, look, I've been shut down. I always made good, uh, but ASIC moved in too early. It shut me down, so I've had to cancel my operations, therefore I'm not getting the money back, therefore all you good people who've invested with me are caught short. Yeah, well there's two answers to that. Firstly, I would have thought 16 years would be a sufficient period of time for a successful program. And secondly, investors did not know that it would take quite a number of years before there would be any return from these investments. In simple terms, how much does Chris Marco owe all up? It's a complicated question. Um, certainly the amount, uh, uh, including all of the interest returns promised to investors, which is $250 million, is not the right amount, nor is just the simple cash in, less cash return number of $50 million. The true figure is somewhere in the middle and it's gonna take a bit more work until we get a, a clear answer on that. Trish, you've tried to get justice on this. You've tried to fight this. Yes, Liam, I've taken him to court. Patricia Markopoulos, is one of two investors 
who've taken legal action against Chris Marco and won. Judge ruled in my favour. Not that it makes much difference to the outcome. Um, well, he, he's declared himself bankrupt, no, hasn't he? he's declared himself bankrupt, yeah. So even though the judge gave you costs, your yes. chances of getting anything back from him... Uh, are non-existent, I should think. How do you perceive it now? How do you frame his actions and his words Oh, he to was you? just conning me. I was completely conned. The fact that Marco has effectively destroyed your husband's legacy, that's, that's, that's the thing. That's correct, yeah. This makes you very emotional now, just thinking about it, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. What, what it's is... been a long, hard journey. What, what is it, Trish, that really upsets you most? To think that Peter's heart earned money has just been vanished, where, or just gone when he worked so hard for, my, for our daughter and myself. He just wanted to give us a good life. Chris Marco, Liam Bartlett. I was expecting you. 60 minutes. You'd like to speak to me, I guess. I would. If you'd like to make an appointment, I'd be very happy to speak with you. A lot of people. With so like many you. questions that only Chris Marco can answer. But look, I'm quite happy to sit down right we now. We caught up with him at one of his favourite haunts. Make an appointment with me, that would be great. You know, forgive me for thinking that promise is about as hollow as the ones you've been giving people for 16 years. <laughs> if you'd like to make an appointment, Liam, I'd be very happy to speak with you. Where, where is all the money? Where are the missing millions? When we sit down and we speak, you'll get a better understanding. He's a thief. You know, someone that steals your money. What else can you say about him? It's interesting how you haven't gone to ASIC and spoken to them. We have. Right. Well, I'm glad that you have, because uh, then when we sit down and we speak... Why do you say that? Well, you'll see the other side. So all you need to do is just make a time there. All right, let's make a time. Monday morning at 9 o'clock, how does that sound? No, you call me on Monday, I'll check my schedule, and I'll lay, we'll name a time and a place, and we'll sit down and we'll talk. <laughs> I'll check my schedule. Is that not how normal commercial business works, Liam? Well, you don't no. run a normal commercial business. That's the whole well, point. Like a badly down. scratched record, Chris Marco said he'd speak to me no less than 52 times. If you would like to sit down with me, I'd be very happy to speak with you. But perhaps it's no surprise that he reneged on his offer of an interview. True to form, another empty promise. Fortunately, I'll probably decline that now. You'll decline? Yes. Why, why is that, Chris? Because uh, I just don't want to do the interview with you, Liam. <laughs> There's no doubt the dream has turned into a nightmare for Chris Marco's investors. For the last two and a half years, they've held on to a sliver of hope that somehow it was all one big mistake. The chances of that now are very slim indeed. The bottom line is he fraudulently misrepresented what yes. he was going to do with your money. Absolutely. Absolutely. These overseas sophisticated programs that he had didn't even exist. So what does that say about the guy? I like to see him behind bars. You know, for a man to deliberately take hard-earned Australian family's money, like he has, stolen it, I'd like to see him with nothing absolutely nothing, and pay the price. As we said, investors have now been waiting for answers for two and a half years. Yet the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, the supposed corporate watchdog, says it's still too early to decide if Chris Marco will face criminal charges. ASIC's investigation is expected to wrap up in the next few months. We'll keep you updated on its progress. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.